We'll have a message today on Acts 14. Heavenly Father, we thank you, and we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit down upon this place. God, we thank you today for the beautiful sun, for the um, low humidity, and for the cool temperature. Lord, we thank you that you uh, are a loving God and that you care for us, and that you've been walking with us all the way through this pandemic. Lord, we thank you for what you've done and the healing, God, that you've provided. We pray, Lord, that you'll speak to us today through the scripture of Acts 14, and that God, through the message that I can serve you uh, as pastor, but God, you'll speak through me because of myself, but probably in spite of myself. God, have your way. Cause healing and community change and transformation. In Jesus' name, amen. First thing I want to tell you all, I figured out why the internet drops off sometimes. It's the Mayan sundial thing. The sun is moving, and I keep setting up where there's shade, but the internet works best about six feet out there, out this door. And I keep moving back, and I'm going to have to stand in the sun soon. So that's why, for some of us, we're having these interruptions. I finally figured it out. But God is good because the sunshine is beautiful, isn't it? And it's just a lower fall sun coming. It's not hot. It's just right. I say that because of God's beauty and the evidence of God is declared in Romans chapter 1 that no person is without excuse to experience God and to know God. As we look at Acts chapter 14, we see that um, as Paul and Barnabas went to Iconium, they went in the usual way to the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively, a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. Last Wednesday, right here where I'm standing, my friend, Pastor Jamie Fetter, was with uh, Pastor Lori Brown and I for the prayer meeting. And it was a good, good Wednesday prayer meeting. When Pastor Jamie was here, um, I was talking with him, and he's transitioned. He's in a church of God, a Pentecostal church. From being in the local church, he feels God calling him to go into worldwide evangelism and missions work. Literally packed up his family from Northeast. They installed a new pastor. They do it differently than we do. And at that point, had a U-Haul and moved to Michigan. How did you end up in Michigan? The Holy Spirit has moved me to Michigan, and it's where God needs me. I had breakfast with him on yesterday, and he shared this. But he said one of the most important things as being an evangelist, as being a community mission worker and an evangelist, is to go meet with the local pastors, to meet with the leaders of the church, to meet with them so that you can build relationships and you're not causing any division. So just as the scripture says here is exactly what he would do. He would go and meet. Here it says at the Jewish synagogue. Here he meets with the leaders. And at that point, relationships are built. Then we can preach the word. We can share God's love. There they spoke so effectively, a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews, in Acts 14 says, who refused to believe, stirred up other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace and enabled them to perform signs and wonders. You know, even yet today, 2,000 years after this text is penned down, we know that there's people in the church, in churches, that for some reason take on a bad spirit and want to cause division and contention and want to cause hurt and pain and want to cause, instead of unity in the church, division. We see in the text, as we're looking today, we see in the text that there's this need for, there's this need for uh, healing uh, in our local church today, just like how we have uh, issues that go on uh, 2,000 years ago. They happen now today. You know, there's about 100 things. Most of you use the internet in one way or another. There's about 100 opinions you can find on one different subject. And the church somehow gets pulled into opinions and politics. My friends, 
the problem that I have with social media, it's awesome. It, it reaches people rapidly. The problem I have with social media is it reaches people rapidly. We're reading 40 and 50 articles sometimes, uh, some of us, and we're not able to make 40 or 50 phone calls to check with people to see if this is real, to check with people to see if this position is really what we believe, or is it someone else's opinion speaking about the church? I'm not even talking about our local church. I'm talking about Christianity in general, or maybe the Methodist church worldwide. I want to tell you that there's hurt that goes on and people um, um, are holding on to it and walking with it. And there's an easy way to get rid of that poison when you see something and you're not sure it's real. Reach out to the pastor, call me, have a chat. We'll talk about the reality of God's love, what the church is or isn't, what Christianity is or isn't. I've had two people this week, not from this church, but that I've talked to, that have been hurt, have been hurt because of the um, things, articles they've read. And there wasn't a lot of truth in these articles, but there was a lot of poison that hurt these folk. So we have to make sure that we're uh, in community, in connection. You know, social distance hasn't hurt your telephone to work. It hasn't hurt the ability to send an email or a text message and ask if you can chat. Healing is what we want to see, not division, not hurt. So we see now that at this point in the, in the church, in Acts 14, Paul and Barnabas uh, spoke considerably for the Lord. The people of the city were divided. Doesn't sound anything like today in America, does it? Some sided with Jews and others with the apostles. There was a plot among Jews and Gentiles together with their leaders, to mistreat and stone Paul and Barnabas. But they found out about it, and they fled. And they went to Lystra and Derbe, in the surrounding country, and continued to preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit protected Paul and Barnabas because there was a need for Paul and Barnabas to continue doing ministry. As they went on in Lystra, uh, there was a man who was lame. The scripture says he'd been that way from birth. He'd never walked. So this man had never experienced walking at all. He uh, was just lame. And his next words say he listened to Paul as Paul was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw the man had faith to be healed, and called out, stand on your feet. At that, the man got up and begun to walk. Miracle. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their own language, the gods have come down in human form. Barnabas, they called Zeus. Paul, they called Hermes. They were using Greek mythology, you see. They were, they were reaching out and asking uh, that there could be sacrifice now, and that they could sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas, remember, in Acts chapter 12, didn't want to do like King Herod and take the glory for their self and remove it from God. They wanted to make sure that their mission was to point the folk there, the pagan society, to Jesus Christ, to the one true Lord, and that the Holy Spirit could empower them. They worked on this crowd and worked on this crowd and worked on this crowd a couple times to point them back to God. And the crowd instead uh, doesn't see that, that it's the one true God they should worship. Instead, the scripture tells us, that some Jews from Antioch and Iconium come down and won the crowd over. They went from the one city where they had to flee them because they wanted to kill them, and now they followed Paul and Barnabas. Why would they go through all that effort? God was being effective through Paul and Barnabas. If a ministry is being effective and reaching lives, it will have a bullseye on it from Satan, and God will need to uh, be invoked by the Holy Spirit to continue sending protection and effectiveness. We see here that then they stoned Paul, dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples gathered around him, the disciples gathered around Paul. I bet you they were praying. I bet you they were lamenting. And I bet you they were asking God, is what we see, what, what reality is. I just interpret that into the text. 
And at that point, Paul got up and Barnabas got up and they went back into the city. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to ask any of you to throw rocks at me because you never know, there might be somebody. But you know what? If you were to stone me and hit me with rocks and throw me off that nice steep embankment out there, which I know you wouldn't do that, if that was to happen, man, I really would have to have God really tell me to come back up the hill all beat up and dead looking to try again and to encourage everybody. What you saw is not really what you saw. You know, God still loves you. He's going to work here before I moved on. They made, Paul and Barnabas made sure to restore that community before they moved on. Their mission was that disciples could be made and lives could be transformed and healing could happen. They preached their way, uh, the gospel, in that city, and then they won a large number. This in Derbe, they've moved again. They returned to Listeria, Icon, Antioch. They strengthened and encouraged those there to remain true to the faith. Look remain true to the faith, stay in biblical Christianity. Don't go to the ways of the world and take cultural Christianity and don't make Jesus out to what we want Jesus to be, but take Jesus as the God of the word, revealed through scripture, transforming lives that can continue to cause us a deeper walk with the Lord. There's a hundred things in our society that you can find that might sound like they're of God. But you've got to test them against God's word. Are these really godly? Or are these things that are of the world, that the world wants me to think are scriptural, but are not? Sometime we'll do a sermon series on that. I, uh, ten weeks we could do things that you think are Christian, but probably are not. You'd be amazed. But we look in the text and we see that as they continue to strengthen the church there, from Italia, they sailed to Antioch, where they'd been committed to the grace of God for the work they'd now completed. Arriving there at Antioch, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he'd opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. They stayed there a long time with the followers. My friends, it's important that we experience the grace of God and the love of God. I, I don't come to church for any reason other than that, to experience God. I had somebody tell me that they enjoy this time of this pandemic. And I was like, oh, I'm thinking a hundred things that I haven't enjoyed. They said, yes, we can do church at home. And if we don't like the message, turn it off. Change the channel. And, you know, we got an old school way of doing that in church. It's called take a nap, you know. Um, but this is the thing. You can do that if that's really what you think the scriptures are telling you to do. But everywhere I've seen in the scriptures, including when there's been times of illness. And look, we know back in the Exodus, there was a time of social distance there. As the Passover was happening, they were locked up in their houses with the blood of the lamb on the door frames so the Holy Spirit would pass over those houses. But you know what? Through those times, God desired that people come together in a physical way when those times were done and healing had happened. God desired that his people would be together in love so that they could work together side by side. The scriptures say, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, turn from their sinful ways, seek my face, pray in my name, the Lord says, I will hear their prayer from heaven and I will heal their land. Coming together. God wants his people together in unity and it's not just his current people, it's also his future people. God wants us to make the circle a little bigger, make room for the next person and cause uh, that unity to happen that's so greatly needed, especially on right now. My friends, I want you to know that the love of God is why we come to church. God revealed through Scripture, Old and New Testament, is the love that's greatly needed. God revealed through Jesus Christ. Born in Bethlehem. 
hid out in Egypt, raised up in Nazareth, walked his way all across the ancient land of Israel, bringing grace, peace, and healing and restoration to all he met. Walked his way right into Jerusalem, knowing he was going to be nailed to a tree and die for our sins. An innocent man of God that was God, sent to earth for one task, to teach us, to live among us, to die, and on day three, be raised from the dead. Jesus in a borrowed tomb from Joseph of Arimathea. Might bother you it was borrowed, but you know what? He only needed it for a short period, long enough to get the keys of life and come back and be alive. When we receive communion, remember that the communion we receive is that, that when Jesus broke bread, he was with his followers. The night before he gave himself up, and on day three, he broke bread on the road to Emmaus as the evening came. My friends, I want you to know that this God we serve wants us united in Jesus Christ. We don't gather here because of the kind of social gathering, and we sure haven't had coffee or anything of frills to bring you. We gather here because we want to worship Jesus. We want to be together in a way that's relevant and safe, but yet that we can praise the Almighty for what he's done. We don't gather here because uh, it, it, it's just a showing. Look at us. We gather here humbly to adore the Lord, to be on our knees and say, God, thank you, to be on our, our knees in spirit and say, Lord, you're such a great God. We love you. My friends, we're here because of the love of Father in heaven and your desire for community. I pray that when this pandemic ends, and God's going to squash it out just like Satan sent it, I pray that you have the desire to be in community in new ways. I pray that you have desire to be connected with one another and make room for others. And I pray that you can be able to experience the grace of Jesus and that we can have missionaries come to the church and share about what God has done through this time in other parts of the world. The hope and love of Jesus Christ be with you, guide you, and direct you, both now and forevermore. God's word for God's people. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we've gathered. And Lord, as we continue and we get ready to roll into Holy Communion, we thank you, God, for the love, the hope, the grace that you send. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. We pray, God, that you'll help provide healing. And that, Father in heaven, for anybody that doesn't have a relationship with your son, Jesus, that they can turn to you, ask Jesus in their heart as their Lord and their Savior, experience the Holy Spirit, and have power of healing and community within their hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray this and we thank you. Amen.